Well, here on Project House, you guys are used to seeing us do projects. Well, today's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna take a really narrow slice. We came to this job site in Wellesley, Massachusetts just to learn how to sheathe walls. And I know, you guys wanna see me put the tool belt on and make a fool of myself trying to keep up with this well-oiled machine, but it ain't gonna happen. So I'm just gonna stand back, ask a lot of dumb questions, and hopefully pull out some great tips for everybody. The first thing that impressed me about this crew was how efficient they were. There was barely any talking as they worked to stick frame these walls as a cohesive, fast-paced machine. Everybody had a job to do, and there was no time wasted. But I wasn't here to learn about their framing techniques. I wanted to see how they installed zip system sheathing. Well, you may not have heard of zip system sheathing, but I bet you've seen it on a house going up near you. It's a really cool product. It's like OSB on steroids. The outside of each sheet is impregnated with a water-resistive barrier. So once you get the sheathing installed on the walls, you come back with the seam tape and you're weather tight and airtight. There's no need for house wrap. Pretty much how it rolls. So did you have any resistance with the framers or are they like the product too? I was always told a great PM can make a subcontractor money by speeding things up, making things more accurate. This does it for me and for them. It's a great product. It can go right up, problem solved, tape it. I can put windows in right away, get a shell legit shell, you know. You can't do that with plywood, OSB. You don't have a, you have a look of a shell, but you can't put anything in it. It's not watertight. Right. This gives you that ability. So you might as well kill two birds with one stone. Absolutely. Here on the second floor, the guys were deck framing, meaning they used the surface of the deck to frame the wall on the flat, then sheathe it, then stand it up into place. The first zip used on this wall assembly was cut to build out the headers like on any job. Nothing unique here, zip was on hand, and zip is what they used. After making sure the wall was perfectly square, they measured down and snapped a line to establish a benchmark for the first course. The benchmark gives them a straight line for installation, and it establishes the proper overhang so the sheathing from the second floor wall will overlap and integrate with the sheathing from the first floor walls. Installing the first course, true to the line, is important because you don't want unnecessary gaps or unevenness between sheets. The idea with zip is that it's not just sheathing, but an integral part of the weather-resistive barrier and air sealing of the wall assembly. The second course is offset from the first, creating a pattern that separates vertical seams by at least three studs. This helps the sheathing perform structurally in addition to its water-resistant and airtight qualities. Another cool tip I learned from these guys is that before sheathing over window and door openings, the crew makes tick marks so that later they can come back and easily locate the edges of the openings. To fasten the sheathing to the studs, they use ring shank sheathing nails. Although it's done by eye, the recommended nailing pattern is to space fasteners 6 inches on center along the supported edges and 12 inches on center at intermediate supports. Where panels butt together on the same stud, standard practice is to keep the nails about 3 8 inch from the edge of the sheet, but I also noticed the framers putting a slight angle on the tool to ensure the nails find solid wood. Ideally, fastener heads are set flush to the surface of the panels, but this can be pretty hard to regulate when firing more than 50 nails per sheet and you don't have to worry about sealing slightly overdriven fasteners. Once the sheathing is in place, they snap lines for the cutouts. Cutting zip is like any other sheathing product. Set your blade depth and you go. For the cutouts, they simply plunge the blade and follow the line. An extremely important step before taping the seams is blowing off the dust. You want to make sure you have a clean, dry surface so the tape will adhere properly to the surface to get the maximum benefit of this system. There are two ways to install the tape, and I see both methods being used here. One is using a tape rolling device that dispenses the tape and applies the necessary pressure to get a good bond. The other option, and the one this crew used most of the time, is to roll out the tape by hand follow up with a rubber roller. 
This step is absolutely critical because the tape is pressure sensitive and must be fully bonded to the surface in order to do its job. Well, with the zip installed and taped, it's time to stand this beast up. That was a great example of installing zip on the flat, but before we left, I asked my camera guy to set up behind the garage to watch a sole carpenter sheath and tape a wall that was already standing to get a glimpse of how that's done. Well, it's not very often you get to hang out and look over the shoulder of a production framing crew, so this is pretty cool. They're going to keep on pushing up, but we got to hit the road, so we'll catch you next time on Project House.